Hi guys, I'm Marie. And I'm Maddie. And we are here today recording Lost in the Woods. And please forgive us if we seem a little tired today. We just got back from a hiking with Hannah, which is a segment that we do on our Patreon channel, where we take my sister, who's not a hiker, into the woods and we try not to kill her. We did an overnight with her last night. Backpacking with Hannah. Backpack. Now it's backpacking with Hannah. <laughs> We also just did our free merch giveaway week two on our Patreon channel. So every week this month, we are doing a giveaway for a merch item. So congratulations to this week's winner. Today, we are going to be covering Karen Sykes. And this one feels very personal to me because... She was a very avid hiker and loved the areas around Mount Rainier. And she has actually done and documented dozens of hikes that Maddie and I have personally done. Scary. It is terrifying. So on Monday, April 25 of 2014, Karen Sykes would go hiking in Mount Rainier National Park where she would disappear. Karen was a very enthusiastic hiker, and she would actually write about her hiking, which I'm really bad about. So she actually did a lot of trail reviews. She took a lot of photos. She actually had a blog, and she even wrote a book about hiking in Western Washington. I actually have it. I've actually read it, and it is called Hidden Hikes in Western Washington. Karen's blog was actually titled Karen Trails, where she documented the different hikes that she encountered. And her blog actually begins in 2008. Okay. She's actually been an avid hiker in Washington since 1980. So that is before I was born, by the way. And she enjoyed hiking every weekend, no matter the weather. So she was a rain, shine, all the weather type hiker. By the way, we definitely just hiked in the pouring down rain today. So. Yeah. Yeah. So for Karen, it was a friend of hers named Stephen who sparked the beginning of her love for hiking. He wanted to take her to Monte Cristo. Which we have actually hiked many times. It's an old ghost town. It's really cool. So after a four mile car ride that led to the trail being closed due to snow, A second trip to Monte Cristo led to another closure due to flooding. Monte Cristo does get closed often. It does, yeah. This is often. And later that year, her friend died in a car crash, preventing him from making it to Monte Cristo. Hmm. But a year later, Karen would actually hike it herself. And she said she has been there ever since. She said in her blog, Stephen left me in Monte Cristo, and that was where I finally began to find myself. It is kind of ironic to me that her friend Stephen is who, like, kind of sparked this for her. And the first two times they tried to go to Monte Cristo, they were unable to. Yeah. But she still... Made it to Monte Cristo. Made it to Monte Cristo and became an avid hiker. Now, her blog posts actually date from her first one, which is titled Monte Cristo's Ghost in 2008, and it's filled with many hiking entries until her untimely death in 2014. Her writing is very descriptive, and it makes you feel like you are on the hike with her. She actually writes a lot of poetry, too. Okay. Her blog posts in the beginning describe a feeling of loathing the brown hikes. Every hike, she set off to find beautiful photographic sites, only to be met with brown hikes. She explains a brown hike as one where the fall colors have dissipated and the ice and snow have not taken on a life force quite yet. The brown hikes didn't really get her the kind of pictures that she was looking for. 
So this is one of the reasons she did not like them. One thing that Karen really liked was finding obscure, hidden trails. And these hikes usually required some sort of route finding. So a map, a compass, like she would actually go off trail, which we do not recommend, FYI, unless you have the skills to find your way back. Which you probably don't have, (laughs) by the way. Which a lot so of don't get cocky and be like, I have the skills, I can do it. Which a lot of people don't have. And we actually, while we were hiking with Hannah up this trail, she's like, Look how pretty it is over there. I kind of like want to walk over there and see what's on the other side of that field or that what's on the other side of that area. And we were like, No, Hannah, do you not listen to our podcast? You cannot leave the trail. And that's also kind of what her book is about is these trails that are kind of they're they're not necessarily off trail but they're older trails that maybe aren't maintained or used on a regular basis Mm. so also a kind of trail that we don't recommend unless you are very experienced yes especially hannah when she is drunk and feels brave enough to leave the trail so use caution please when you're out there Some hikes that she blogged about on Mount Rainier, Trail of the Shadows, Rampart Ridge, Mildred Point, Summerland, Upper East Trail, Crystal Peak, Skyscraper Pass, Sourdough Gap to Crystal Lake, Summerland, Panhandle Gap, my favorite by the way, I've been there, that's part of Wonderland Trail, Grand Park via Sunrise, Boundary Trail, Indian Bar, Eastside Trail, Paraside Glacier, Paraside River Trail, Huckleberry Creek, Barkley Park, Laughing Water Creek, Trail of the Shadows. Like, all of those are in Mount Rainier. So in this national park where she goes missing, those are all hikes that she's already done. In this in, area. Right, in or around Mount Rainier and has blogged about them. And this is one of the reasons that people find it so bizarre that she disappeared in an area that she was so familiar with. Just shows you. It really, I mean, it really does. It's terrifying. And I think that, I mean, I would say that I've probably gotten overly confident every now and then while hiking. Yes. Yes. On multiple occasions, I'm going to go hiking by myself. Okay. My podcast listeners and my mother and my daughter not to go hiking by themselves, (laughs) but I... I can go out in the woods by myself. Oh, my gosh. I don't do it that often. Well, you know. Karen's last blog post was dated June 4th of 2014. And this was when she hiked Lime Kiln Trail. It's a pretty hike. The river's pretty on that one. It is a pretty hike. The river's really, really green. We have hiked that one also many times. In her final blog post, she stated... I still enjoy the challenge of rugged trails, obscure trails, abandoned trails, and looking for artifacts, even if the price of a losing battle with Devil's Club, salmonberry, rotting stumps, and nettles, sometimes it just feels good to tussle with Mother Nature. It builds character. So those are all things that are on that trail. Devil's Club. I fucking hate Devil's Club. Uh... I don't know what what her problem with salmon berries was, but rotting stumps and nettles all out there. Uh, Also, there are a lot of abandoned artifacts on this trail, which are really cool. And you, at the end of it, you hike down all along the river, and at the end, there's like an old lime kiln still there. It's pretty cool, actually. Yeah. Her age never seemed to be an issue because she's 70 years old at this point. 70. This woman is 70 and she is still out there hiking like a maniac, which I kind of love. So on June 18th, 2014, Karen and her boyfriend, Bob Morthrust, who was also her hiking partner, set off for Owie High Lake Trails inside of Mount Rainier National Park. Very pretty area, by the way. Yes. So when the couple were met with melting snow... 
Bob decided the hike, which was around eight miles, was looking to be too difficult. And they decided to split up and planned on meeting in an hour. Mm. Bob stayed behind and ate his lunch. Now, this really, Karen wanted to continue on. She wanted to go a little bit further. She wanted to get a good picture. And it kind of sounds like this wasn't unusual for them to do. Karen chose to continue on crossing steep and rugged terrain. And when she did not make it to their meeting spot, Bob reported her missing around 10.30 p.m. that night. So he must have been looking for her maybe for a long time. Yeah. I mean, I guess. That's a long time. It was reported that the trail was covered in snow, and it was not believed that Karen could have made it much further up from where her and Bob split. Also, if the trail is covered in snow, it makes it really hard to follow as well, unless you have... Mm -hmm. Unless it's a well-hiked trail that has a lot of traffic on it where you can see where other people have gone. But even I did one the other day that has a lot of traffic on it. And about halfway up, I could no longer find any footprints at all. Yep. Been there, done that. So it can be really hard. Like one day of fresh snowfall can cover any prints that, that were there before. Yeah. Oh, yeah. And the tree can be higher than the markers, the trail markers, if there's any, if there Mm -hmm. even is any. Right, yeah. And a lot of our trails don't have any kind of trail marking to follow unless it's a, you know, like Mailbox Peak, I know, has like some tree trail markers in the on the old trail. Yeah. But for the most part, it's really difficult if you don't have a trail to follow. So there was a three-day search that ensued, and all involved in the search believed that they would find her alive because of her knowledge of the train and the trails and her hiking experience. Right. And I don't know exactly what kind of gear she carried. I couldn't really find anything about that. But a lot of really experienced hikers will carry more gear. Mm-hmm. That's not to say that she was. I'm not sure what her pack looked like. But I know that Maddie and I, we always carry some kind of shelter. We always carry extra food. We always carry extra clothing. So why well, I have no idea what her situation was. But either way, on Saturday, June 21, they would find her body. And where they found her, she was off trail. And we don't know if this was intentional. We don't know if she lost her way. But she was definitely off of the main trail. She was located near Boundary Creek in rough and steep terrain. Now, this was an area that had very little traffic, especially at this time of year. Mm -hmm. So probably the trail became hard to follow. And if it's steep and rough, she could have easily gotten off course. Oh, yeah. It's actually believed that she could have been heading up Governor's Ridge, which was 1,000 feet above Awihai Lakes vertically. So that's a good that's a good distance above. Yeah, it is. But this was an area that a lot of people went because you could get such better photos there. She ended up being a little over two miles away from where she had separated from Bob. So she was only two miles away from where he had last seen her. Jesus. Ah. Uh. Her final cause of death was hypothermia, and it was also discovered that she had arteriosclerotic vascular disease, which may have contributed to her having more issues out there in the cold. And it kind of sounds like she didn't know she had that, but we don't know that for sure. Another thing about having a hiking partner, too, is sometimes your levels of expertise are not the same, right? Bob doesn't want to go any further. Karen really wants to go a little further. So it seems really innocent to say, well, let's split up and I'll take a break and eat some lunch and we'll meet back up again. It it seems really innocent, right? Mm -hmm. It can be so dangerous. And this isn't the first one we've covered where 
two people split up. No, no, no. We've covered multiple of those. The weather at the time that Karen went missing carried a low around 40 degrees. Right, and that does not account for any kind of wind chill or anything like that. So the part where she separated from Bob to explore was on a snowy trail about 5,000 feet up on the east side of the mountain. She had hiked from the other side to this point in 2004, according to her blog post. Mm. So she's already hiked in this exact area. So she probably felt even more comfortable and confident of her skills. There had been a warning put out by the park about the snow, which had begun to melt at a fast pace but was still covering a large portion of the trail. So basically, the park had already said, the snow is melting fast in this area, but it's still covering the majority of the trail. So Maddie and I have snow. We have spikes. We have snowshoes. We have ways to hike in the snow. And I'm sure that Karen probably had something like that as well. My boots aren't waterproof. I don't have boots for the snow. Maddie's boots are not waterproof, though. So when we do go do anything in the snow, she's going to be uncomfortable regardless. I want to (laughs) die. She does. It's true. Toes frostbitten. Can't feel anything. She she complains a lot more when her feet are wet, for sure. Who doesn't? Well, I just have waterproof boots so my feet don't get wet. She had also told her boyfriend that she was only going to travel a little bit up and then come back. But either she was turned around and thought she was going the right way, or she couldn't resist the temptation of a better picture and had gone further than she intended. Uh. Now, he knew that she had enough to survive at least overnight. So the next day, they had really high hopes that they were going to find her. Mm Mm-hmm. And that she would not have perished through the night. Yeah, she was alive. Yeah, so that to me also suggests that she probably had at least warmer gear on her and was somewhat prepared. Especially with her knowledge of the area. Because Mount Rainier, I've hiked the areas around Mount Rainier mid-summer or late summer. And there's still snow in a lot of higher places. Yeah. So, and it definitely has its own weather up there. Now, there's no information out there that any other injuries were found during her autopsy, which to me suggests that she probably didn't fall and injure herself or fall and make it impossible for her to hike out. And it's probably more likely that she hunkered down for the night and tried to take shelter. 100%. And according to an article written by The Guardian, Karen's death followed six climbers who were climbing on the southeast side of the summit of Mount Rainier and had fallen to their deaths. Six. Were they all tied together? Oh my God, they were probably tied together. Now these six climbers actually fell 3,300 feet along the steep north slope of Mount Rainier. And searchers found tents and clothes mixed with rock and ice in a debris-filled field along the Carbon Glacier, which was their climbing route. So avalanche, probably. And that was two guides and four clients. So they had two professionals with them. So that just tells you, like, how treacherous this area can be. Now, Karen had another passion besides mountains and trails, and that was poetry. And you can see her poetry sprinkled out a little bit throughout her blog post. And there's also a book of poems and memories on Karen that I also have as well. But she describes herself 
in the 70s as a high heel wearing smoker who drank a lot. And when she discovered hiking, that was when, as she described herself as trading in her high heels for hiking shoes. She was also quoted as saying, I believe the mountains chose me to write about them. And write about them she did between her blog post and also a weekly hiking section from the Seattle Post. She also wrote two books, Best Wildflower Hikes in Washington, which I couldn't actually find that book, by the way, and Hidden Hikes in Western Washington. And to be clear, her book, Hidden Hikes, is geared towards experienced hikers with a sense of adventure who also have route finding skills. It's not just like for the amateur hiker. So don't get that book and just go do the hikes. If you're not an experienced hiker, please. You should get the book and do the hardest one with the most complicated trail to find. That's what I want to do. She was also never known to have any broken bones, back or knee issues, or health issues, except a little hearing loss and vision loss. So her body was holding up really well for being a gal in her 70s out there hiking. A little bit about Mount Rainier. So Mount Rainier sits as Washington State's highest peak at 14,411 feet. And the National Park has roughly 2 million people who visit each year. And if I remember correctly... A lot of people went missing while hiking during COVID, too, on Mount Rainier. Like, there were multiple ones in one week. Dude, a whole bunch of people go missing on Mount Rainier every year. I know. It's crazy. Well, there's a lot, a lot of hiking in that area. Mm -hmm, Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Now, Mount Rainier erupted in 1894 and is still considered a dangerous active volcano. I don't know how dangerous, but it's considered that. There have been around 400 deaths since 1897 on Mount Rainier. The largest amount of lives claimed were 11 of 23 who were caught in an avalanche. Lots of avalanches, too, on Mount Rainier. One of the cool things about Mount Rainier, though, is it does have the Wonderland Trail, which goes around the entire mountain. It's 93 miles if you don't do any extra hikes, and it has about 22,000 feet of elevation gain. The highest point being Panhandle Gap, which is at 6,750 feet. And I have actually done this hike. Nope. Maddie is not interested. I was like just telling my sister today, actually, that I kind of want to do it again because when I hiked Wonderland, it was my first... I don't think you remember how you came out of those woods. (laughs) I don't think you remember that. But I was still kind of new to backpacking when I did Wonderland. And so I I wish I could do it again with the knowledge that I have now and enjoy it a little more. No, yeah. I did hike it. I did hike it in nine days. Uh, Most of my group did not finish the hike. Only me and one other person finished the hike. It was very difficult. It was a lot of mileage. We had some bad weather on day two, which kind of just destroyed, well, it destroyed my feet and my shoulders because everything got wet. But it really was an amazing experience. But seeing all sides of the mountain and the different terrain, and this was the middle of summer, there were still a lot of areas that could have been very dangerous where we were hiking. Oh, yeah. So just be really careful when you're out there, you guys. Don't split up from your partner or your hiking partners, even though I literally just talked about all of my hiking partners leaving on Mount Rainier. But I wasn't the only one left. You know, we still had two together. So such a sad story to have somebody like Karen who really – was passionate about hiking, was passionate about the environment, about all of those things. To have her lose her life out there is just so sad. Yeah. It's very tragic. And it just goes to show that it doesn't always matter if you have experience. It doesn't matter how familiar or comfortable you are with an environment. It can still kill you. 
So I actually got, when I got Karen's book, The Hidden Hikes in Washington, I started reading it and right away in acknowledgments, I read this. I also give special thanks to Kathy Kelleher, who accompanied me on most of these trails. Her map and compass expertise far surpassed mine, and without her, I might still be out in the mountains somewhere. Ugh. I literally like had to stop reading for a minute after reading that. I was just like, oh my God. Kill me now. I can't. It's so, so upsetting. I'm so upset. No, so, I mean, doesn't matter how many hikes you do, you can still get lost out there when you're by yourself, especially. Now, Karen's daughter had said that she always said that if her life was going to end, she would want it to end in the mountains. Ugh, I hate it so much. I hate it. Hate it. Hate it. Okay, so this is where they split up, and that's roughly where she was found. Fuck. So if you look at the map of where they were, you can see the trail. You can see the switchbacks on the main trail. And then you can see where they split up. And where she was found, the terrain looks really rough in between where her and Bob split up and, and where she like was found. way off trail. She is way off trail. She is two miles in the complete opposite direction as the trail. I really do think that the best thing that anybody who's going to hike on a regular basis, especially if you're going to hike by yourself or with another hiker who's maybe not experienced, is just to get GPS. Download Gaia. Well, well, you can't call for help with Gaia, though. But you yeah, can but you can download your maps ahead of time, so you at least have a map. That, that's been a lifesaver for me. Lifesaver. We life love yeah. Gaia. We love it. But I also carry my Garmin, which I have never really used. I mean, I will use it if I'm on an overnight to, like, send a message because I can send a message through it when I don't have service. But just to have it in my pack, to know... That if I get lost, I can call emergency services and be like, hey, I'm lost. Can you see where I am? What do I need to do? And where do I need to go? Or I can call for help if I get injured or something. Yeah. So just that peace of mind will always, like, I don't think I could go without it now that I've had it. Mm, yeah, you would die. You would die out there. You would die out there. doesn't matter. It doesn't well, matter how much experience you have. Thanks for your faith in me. <laughs> no. Look at this lady. She got lost. She was experienced. She wrote a book. She I wrote know. a book. And she still got lost. Yeah. I can't. Yeah. So it's pretty scary. It's pretty crazy. I mean, I'm sitting here and I'm looking at her book, right? I'm looking at pictures of her just hiking through the woods and sitting at the lakes and just, uh, I can't. It's so tragic. This is a sad one. But we did add a couple of her hikes uh, to our list of hikes for the summer. So we want to go and check out some of those and see where she's been. And I don't know. It's it's probably just going to make me sadder, but I still want to do it. Yeah. So that is the case of Karen Sykes. And... I really hope that everybody just takes a little bit of advice from us and just be extra careful and extra vigilant. Stay on the path. Make sure you know where you're going. Make sure somebody knows where you're going and somebody knows when you're coming back. I cannot believe she was so experienced. She wrote a book and then she... Yeah, it's so tragic, you guys. Anybody can get lost. Do not get cocky out there. Nope. All right. Thanks, you guys, for tuning in. If Stay you need, tuned for our drawings. Yep. If you need more content, go check out our Patreon. Go join our Patreon and you'll still be entered into our last two drawings of the month. We have a ton of bonus material on there. And we have Hiking with Hannah coming out, which let's Another just face one. it, is so entertaining. Yep. The only thing I wrote in the like the log on our book was like, I think this was Hiking with Hannah. Don't think we would have made it without the vodka. Hannah's really scared of heights. We made her walk up the stairs. <laughs> nice. Like along those lines. 
All right. So thanks, you guys. And we will see you next week. We're going to sign off and hop on over to our bunker talk for this episode, which you can also find on our Patreon. Yeah. All right. Bye.